Hey guys, Casey Ferris here. Thanks for checking out another video of mine here on YouTube. Today we are talking about some differences between Adobe After Effects and the Fusion tab inside of DaVinci Resolve 15. Pretty much the idea here is we're gonna build something in After Effects and I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing inside of Fusion. This will help anybody who is familiar with After Effects get into Fusion and be a little bit less confused and uh, you know, have a good time because you know, good times. <laughs> anyway, let's, <clears throat> let's get into it. We're just gonna be making kind of some simple graphics today because it'll teach you the basics without getting too crazy town. I'm gonna start by clicking a new composition. Sweet, hit okay. I'm gonna right click down here, hit new solid. And let's do this on just kind of a nice pink, maybe a little bit more red. Yeah, something like that, magenta red solid. Boom, there's our background. Now I'm gonna right click and say new text and we'll call this something special, something special. Zoom this up a little bit. We'll use a font called motion control and I'm gonna align that to the middle. Now let's put a drop shadow on this. I'll go to the effect controls, go to perspective, drop shadow, and let's pump up the distance a little bit, something like that, 50% black, yeah. Something nice like that. Now I'm gonna make a little vignette. There's about 100 ways to do this, but I think what I'll do is I'll make a solid and we'll just make it a black solid. I'm gonna grab my ellipse tool, double click it. That's gonna make an ellipse and I will set my mask to subtract. I'll hit F and feather that out a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is hit T to bring up my opacity controls for this layer and bring it down, bring it all the way down and push it back up a little, something like that. And maybe we want this to fly in. Let's have it fly in at one second. S and shift P, that's gonna bring up my position and scale keyframes. And I'll click on the stopwatches there to add a keyframe right where it is. Move to the beginning of the sequence and I'll scale it up quite a bit, something like that. Position it so it's still in the middle and shoop, there we go. That's a little too slow. So I'll just bring this back here. I'll hit F9. What that's gonna do is smooth out my keyframes. So here's what it looks like. Shoom, nice. And you have to say shoom. Shoom, perfect. So let's say we like that. Now what I wanna do is add kind of a camera shake to this. So I'm gonna select all of this and hit Control Shift C. That's gonna make a pre-comp. I'll just call it pre-comp one, hit okay. And now I can move everything all at once as if it's kind of its own footage. And the way I'm gonna make this shake is by adding a wiggle. And I could do this myself, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna to go to effects and presets and type wiggle. And I'll drag wiggle position to my pre-comp. And up here in my effect controls, I'll bring the amount down a little bit and speed up a little bit, something like that. And I'll take this footage and I'll just scale it up just a little. Let's see what it looks like. Something special, yeah. There's kind of some basic graphics in After Effects, and that's pretty much how you would do that in After Effects. If you're familiar with After Effects, all of this makes perfect sense. So now I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing inside of Resolve in the Fusion tab. All right, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve 15. The first thing we're gonna do is make our composition. Probably the fastest way to do that is just go to Titles here in the Edit tab and drag Text Plus into our timeline and then click the Fusion tab. So this is the Fusion tab. If you haven't ever opened it before, if you don't know what it is, here's a basic rundown. Down here are the nodes. This is a lot like your layer stack here in After Effects, but it's not really built in layers. It's more like a flow chart of how things are put together in your composition, which sounds super confusing, but I promise you it's not as scary as it seems. So I'll teach you kind of the need to know basics to get this composition working. In the nodes, each node is a part of the composition. Right now, this is a node called template. And without explaining a million things, you can just delete this right now, okay? Media out is what's going to be rendered. So anything that's connected to this is gonna be something that the viewer will see. Let's start out with something. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna right click on the background here 
and go to add tool, go up to generator and hit background. And I'll just grab this little gray square and connect it to my media out. A background you can basically think of like a solid in After Effects. Watch, I'm gonna grab this little color thing, bring it down to that kind of red magenta. And there we go, that's our magenta solid. So now you may be wondering, okay, how do I add the text layer over it? There aren't really layers in Fusion in the same way that there are layers inside of After Effects. You do put things over things, but it's not really like a stack of layers. It's built with these nodes. Let's say we wanna put text over this background. I can right click, say add tool, let's say generator and go to text plus. You'll notice there's not a lot going on. One of the reasons is because I don't have anything in styled text right now. So I'll type something special. And you'll notice that I can't connect this to media out. It doesn't work. But if we wanna see what's going on, if I hover over this arrow, I can disconnect it by clicking on it and then connect it to media out and see we have something special in here. So whatever's connected to media out, that's what's going to render but we can only connect one thing at a time. So what do we do? We're gonna use a special node called a merge node. And a merge node is basically put something over something else. So I'm gonna right click, say add tool, go up to composite and hit merge. So now we just have to connect all the pieces. I'm gonna disconnect my background and I'm gonna connect it to my merge node. And then I can connect my text to my merge node too. And then if I want to see what's happening, I can grab my merge node and connect it to my media out and look, there's our composition. You're probably saying this seems like a ton of work to just put a layer over another layer. The good news is that you can kind of streamline this process in a couple ways. The first way is if you just click somewhere on the node graph and you hit control space bar, it brings up this little select tool thing and you can type in what you want to add. So if I type MRG, that's a shortcut for a merge node. And then I can just hit enter and it will make that node for me. And then I can, you know, do all my fancy things like I was gonna do. But I can even make this faster if I have my background node selected and I hit control space bar, and I think it's alt space bar on Mac, brings up this menu, type MRG. It makes the node and it connects it between the background and the media out and all I have to do is add my text node. That's pretty quick, but you can even make it quicker. Watch this. I have my text node, I have my background node. I'm gonna grab my text node and I can't put it on media out, but if I drag it onto this little piece of the background, watch this, let go. It makes a merge node and puts it in there and puts everything on top of it. So it's kind of like just dragging something on top of something else and it'll make a merge node. So is that more complicated than just putting something on top of something else? For something simple like this, yes, but it actually gives you a lot of control over the way these things interact. For instance, if I want to adjust how this text looks, I could go through the properties of my text node here in the inspector, which is a lot like the effect controls inside of After Effects, or I can adjust a lot of things within the merge node. So I can adjust the sizing, adjust the angle, and all of that stuff without actually adjusting how the text layer looks, which is really cool because you can adjust all kinds of things without actually hurting anything on your layer. You just adjust how it is composited. So if this makes sense to you, you have officially learned just about the hardest part of Fusion, which is that there aren't layers, it's done with nodes. And if you're okay with that, the rest of it is gonna make a lot of sense. So now we have this text, merged over our background. I'm gonna to go to my text layer and change the font to motion control, something like that. Adjust my size. Now I need to add a drop shadow. This is where things get actually a little bit easier than in After Effects. With my text node selected, all I have to do is hit control space bar and type S-H-A-D, and that will bring up tools that start with S-H-A-D, and one of them is shadow. I'll hit okay. What that's gonna do is add a drop shadow to my text and look, it's connected in between my text node and the merge. So I'll select my shadow node and I can adjust this shadow offset and we had it at 50% opacity in After Effects. So we'll just do something like that here in the alpha. So let's switch back to After Effects, looking pretty good. But now how do we make this black solid 
with the mask over it. We already learned that a solid is basically a background node. So I'm gonna select my merge node and hit control spacebar and type BG. There's background, I'll hit enter. And what that's gonna do is automatically make another merge node for me, as well as my background layer, which happens to come up as black. Now what do we do? We gotta add a mask to this. Quickest way to do this is actually just like After Effects with my background node selected, I'll just click this ellipse button right here and that's gonna add an ellipse mask to my background. I'll go over here to my width and height and just kind of adjust it to be roughly what we had in After Effects. And I'll bring up my soft edge a little bit and I'll click invert. Very, very similar to the way things work in After Effects. But now this background is coming in a little bit strong. It's like way too dark. So we gotta turn the opacity down. And if you want to, you can grab this alpha and bring that down and that would work just fine. But another way that you can do it that's actually a little bit, that's probably a little bit cleaner is to go to your merge node. And here we have an attribute called blend and you can do the same thing and just blend that down. So now we have our composite, something special. Now we gotta animate this text. Easiest way to do that is just grab this first merge. That's the one that's controlling this text being merged over the pink background. And I'll scroll up here to size. Let's see where our keyframe in After Effects is living. That's at six frames. So let's go to frame six. With my merge node selected, this attribute that says size, I'm gonna click this little diamond and that's gonna add a keyframe right there at frame six. And I'll bring it back to zero and size it up a little bit. This is pretty much exactly the way you would do it in After Effects. It's just done inside of the merge node instead of the text layer. Another thing I wanna do is adjust the center because this is kind of not in the middle of the screen. Go back to frame six, add a keyframe on my center bring it back to zero, and I'll move it back up like that, something like that. So now we have this coming in like that, but now how do we smooth out those keyframes? Because in After Effects, all you have to do is select the keyframes and hit F9. It works pretty similar inside of Fusion. In the upper right-hand corner, there's a button that says Spline. That's gonna open up your spline window, which is exactly like graph mode inside of After Effects it's pretty much the same thing, okay? So if you've ever used the graph editor, this will make a lot of sense to you. This pretty much just adjusts the way that keyframes are interpolated, and it lists all the properties that are animated right here on the left, and you click which ones you wanna see. So I'll just click everything, and now nothing happens. All you have to do is click this little button that says zoom to fit, and that's gonna zoom up everything that you need to pay attention to all the keyframes that are animated. I'm gonna select these last keyframes because those are the ones that are gonna matter and I'll hit F for flatten. And that's pretty much just going to ease in just like an easy ease inside of After Effects. Shoop, same way. See, told you, it even says shoop. I knew it, I knew it would work. So everything's pretty much animated. Now all we have to do is add that wiggle. There are ways to do that wiggle expression inside of Fusion. In fact, you can right click and add an expression to just about any property in the inspector here. And it works very similarly to After Effects. But if we're gonna add a camera shake, Fusion actually has a camera shake effect. And the cool part is that we don't even need to pre-comp any of this because just the way that nodes work, anytime that you merge something, it's kind of like pre-comping in that you can move everything around as a group. So I'm gonna select my merge node and hit control spacebar and type S-H-A-K-E. And this top one that says camera shake, C-S-H-K, that's the one I want, I'm gonna hit add. And this is very similar to the wiggle position preset inside of After Effects. We have strength, speed, distance, those type of things. I'll take my speed down a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. It's too much. Take the strength way down. Maybe a little more. Maybe I don't want it to rotate. There we go. And there's kind of a similar thing. 
Cool thing here too is that there's a few different options on how to fill in the edges. So you can say wrap and that will probably work pretty well. You can duplicate or mirror things. And so you don't really even have to scale it up. But if we want to do that, we can just add a transform node to the end of all this by typing XF and bringing up the size just a little bit and it'll work the same way. So there we go. And when you want to render it out or add it to your timeline or whatever, all you have to do is just click edit and there it is in the timeline ready to go. So even though this looks more complicated, it's not actually any more complicated than the way you would do it in After Effects. It's just all the pieces are laid out here instead of in properties of layers. We still have a background layer and a text layer. The text layer has a drop shadow and we're putting that text layer on top of the background. We also have a background layer with a mask on it that we're putting over those two layers. Then we're adding some shake and we're scaling it up a little bit and then we're rendering it. Same thing here. We have our background layer, we have our text layer with our drop shadow on it and we're putting it over our magenta layer. We also have a black solid with a mask on it that we're putting over everything. Then we have to pre-comp it, but we're adding a camera shake with this wiggle and we're scaling it up and then we're rendering it. So really the difference is everything's kind of laid out here, all the pieces, and you can see it at a glance without having to open a bunch of layers and figure out what's going on. And I've actually gotten to the point being a hardcore After Effects nerd that I like working in Fusion a little better. I know it's crazy to say. Anyway, that's not every single thing in the world about Fusion, but it's how to do some practical stuff, which I know I appreciate when it comes to training. So I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you like this, hit like, and for more color grading, post-production, Fusion, Resolve tutorials, make sure to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. Hit that notification bell. That about does it for me. My name is Casey Ferris. I will catch you next time. Thank <music> you.